How are you feeling? Is your headache any better? Yeah, thanks for asking. I took an aspirin and now I feel completely back to normal. Funny how that works. Cause and effect, right? Totally. Hang on. What is that? Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's him! It's Captain Causality! Greetings, my little Cosketeers. I couldn't help but hear young Tommy and Jessica talking about causality. How did you hear that? You weren't anywhere near us. What the hell? Who are you? And what'd you do to Linda? I'm calling the police. I've come to correct a causal catastrophe. No need to thank me. Now, Tommy and Jessica, you were both engaged in fallacious causal reasoning. You implied that taking the aspirin caused Jessica's headache to go away. I had a headache, I took the aspirin, and it went away. The aspirin caused it to go away. Obvi. Yeah, obvi. Ha! Every morning I dress two gerbils as gladiators, glue tiny swords to their paws, and attempt to make them fight to the death in a hamster ball that I call the Bolosseum. Subsequently, the sun rises. Did my gerbil ritual cause the sun to rise? What? No, of course not. But suppose I was convinced that this gerbil ritual was the only thing that caused the sun to rise. And so I did it every morning without fail. How would you convince me otherwise? Well, if you didn't do the ritual and the sun still came up, then you'd be convinced, right? Yes! As long as I wasn't an anti-vaxxer. You're saying that if Jessica hadn't taken the aspirin, her headache might still be gone right now? Exactly, Tommy! We can conceptualize two worlds, one in which Jessica takes the aspirin and one in which she does not. If her headache went away, in the world where she takes the aspirin and not in the world where she doesn't, then we'd conclude that the aspirin helps. But I can't go back in time and change my mind to not take the aspirin. So how can we ever know? Ha! The classic causal conundrum. You can't both receive and not receive treatment at the same time. So what can we do? Yeah, what can we do? Oh, uh, shut up, Tommy. To formalize the causal question, i.e., does aspirin have a causal effect on headaches? We can use the language of potential outcomes. Consider a population of people with headaches that might consider taking aspirin. We can think of each one of them as having two intrinsic potential outcomes, one associated with taking an aspirin and one associated with not taking an aspirin. It might be useful to think about these outcomes as being inside of these people. For example, if Tommy was a member of our hypothetical population, then inside him would be two potential outcomes. A potential outcome, say Y star zero, representing the outcome we would observe if Tommy didn't take the aspirin. This outcome might take the values headache still there or headache gone. Oh my god, this is clearly unnecessary. And a potential outcome, say Y star 1, representing the outcome we would observe if Tommy did take the aspirin. Again, taking the values headache still there or headache gone. One way to define the causal effect of aspirin would be the difference between the proportion of people that would be headache free if they were to take aspirin with the proportion that would be headache free if they were to forego taking the aspirin. In other words, the difference between the proportion of people in the population that have Y star 1 equal to headache gone and the proportion that have Y star 0 equal to headache gone. But how can we estimate those proportions? What a beautiful, too young for me, question. 
Suppose each member of the population flipped a fair coin, and if the coin showed heads, they took the aspirin, and if it showed tails, they did not. Then, because the decision to take aspirin was assigned randomly, the people who took the aspirin would not, at least in a distributional sense, be systematically different from those who did not take the aspirin. Thus, the outcomes observed among those that took the aspirin would act as a random sample of Y star 1 values, and the proportion of those people that had outcomes had a gone would serve as an estimator of the proportion of the population that would not have a headache had they all taken aspirin. Similarly, the outcomes observed among the group that did not take aspirin would act as a random sample of Y star zero values, and the proportion of these people that had the outcome headache gone would serve as an estimator of the proportion of the population that would not have a headache if no one had taken aspirin. Thus, the difference in the proportions that were headache-free among those randomly assigned to take aspirin and those randomly assigned to forego aspirin would serve as an estimator of the causal effect. This is a part of how and why randomized clinical trials are run the way that they are. Tommy and Jessica, I hope that you've learned a lesson about fallacious causal reasoning. My work here is complete! Uh, you're cut up pretty bad. Does that hurt? It's the only way that I can tell that I still feel.